uh, I want to show you something. We collect rainwater for all of our needs. And we've been living like this for the past 20 years. We have tanks down here. I have about 12,000 liter tanks. This is our water pump. It works perfectly. And, and we have good filters, so we can even drink the water. There you go. Hi again. Uh, it's been almost a year since I last posted a video about my trailer camper. And for a reason, it's because uh, making videos is really time consuming and I just don't have enough time. You know, I have a family and kids and a job. Anyways, uh, now with this virus, we're all forced to stay at home and so time is something that I have lots of. So I thought I'd make videos that I've always wanted to regarding the capabilities of e-bikes especially going uphill. What elevation gain can an e-bike do? Uh, anyways, I'm lucky because I, the road that I live on is an 8%, has an 8% incline. It's about 450 meters long. And uh, so it has a 36 meter elevation gain from one end to the other. If I do this 20 times, it's a 720 meter elevation gain, which is quite something. Now, there's no one there. I can go up and down as many times as I want and I won't see a soul. Uh, so this is what I'll do. I'll test the e-bike um, with and without the trailer, with or without solar panels, to see what uh, what elevation gain I can do. I want to show you the e-bike I'll be using. If you notice, these are just uh, cheap Chinese kids e-bikes, and but they are really good. With this one, I've actually crossed France. Uh, this, these are a 250 watt motor. It's quite a small battery. It's 8.8. Uh, .8, uh, this is their nine. This one is nine. This one is 8.8 amperes hour, which is not very much. So I'll be using this bike to pull the trailer. I have the hitch there. Well, let's see how many laps I do on one battery. It's fully charged on 42 volts. Uh, I'll be using assistance one all the way, and I just hope I don't lose count of the loops. The average speed is this, 11 point something. I just did 10 laps in 38 minutes. That's a 360 meter gain. The battery says 39.2. I'll keep you updated in the next 10 laps. I'm forced to look at the same scenery over and over again. Uh, I guess it could be worse. 20 laps, 720 meter gain. The battery says 37.2. I have to do another 10 more. As the battery goes down, so does the speed. I just done 30 laps, that's 27 kilometers, 1,080 meter gain. Uh, I'm, I'm tired. The battery says 36.2 volts, so it's still going. It still has some juice left. Gee, I'm tired. Uh, I'm going to do one more, just to say I've done at least 1,100 elevation. So, and then that's it, I'm going home. What elevation gain can I get with maximum assistance from the battery? Uh, I'll be moving at close to 20 kilometers an hour, so we'll see what happens. So here we go, assistance five. Battery says 42 volts, it's full. We'll see how many laps we can do. This is the average speed I'm doing. This is the speed in the harder part. I just did 10 laps, it took me 23 minutes. And the battery reads 37.3. Uh, I'll try to do 10 more laps. Uh, I doubt the battery will last that long. Well, 
I was able to do another five laps for a total of 15 and the battery is just too low so at rest it's uh, 36 volts but that's at rest because uh, when the motor is pulling hard the battery just goes down to 31.7 it's just too low I don't think that's healthy and uh, the battery heats up a little bit which I've never seen so uh, these are really e-bikes they're not motorbikes you know this is proof that uh, if you want to have a mo an electric motorbike you should have a really large battery I'm preparing the, the trailer to go up and down that road maybe 20 times. So, first thing is to fill up the trailer. First thing is that. Simulate my luggage. into the battery. There you go. It's on. Okay. So I'm starting off to go up and down this hill. Well, I'll, I hope to do it at least 10 times, maybe 20 times, we'll see. And the battery I know is at uh, 41.7. I have to say that the weather is semi sunny. Sometimes it's sunny, sometimes it's cloudy, sometimes there's some brightness, there's also some shade. So I guess that's average what you catch in a day while touring. 10 kilometers an hour going up. I mean, it would be much harder if I didn't have an e bike. Just a regular bike pulling the trail would be much harder. Here. One is done, 19 to go. I'm not alone. So I just did 10 laps. That's an elevation gain of 360 meters. Let's see, it's, uh, it's almost an hour, 55 minutes. So I'm going to do another 10. I'm going to keep on going. So I just did 20 laps, that's uh, 18 k's going up and down and uh, elevation 720 meters. It's at uh, 36.4 volts, there's still something left, I can still go, go a bit more. I could try make another 5 loops which would do an elevation gain of 900 meters, that'll be something. Yeah? So oh, I just reached the top, 900 meters. I'm quite tired. Anyways, it says here 35.7 uh, volts still, so the battery is not actually dead. 
I'm sure I could reach a thousand meters or more. That's not bad, eh? It's not bad at all. I just finished. I just, it took me uh, 2 hours and 45 minutes to do 22 and a half k's. Uh, it's 900 meters elevation. So now I'm going to leave the battery in here to recharge with this 100 watt panel. And tomorrow morning we'll see how long it takes to charge this. It's now 10 a.m. And yesterday I left the battery inside the trailer to charge. I left it at about 5 p.m. But in this spot, the sun only shines until about uh, 6 p.m. Now, one thing I noticed is that I forgot to turn the trailer towards the east for better angle of the sun. So, let's see what that looks like. Battery says 37.1. So, I'll come back a bit later to see how it's charging. Notice how I have the panel spaced away from the camper. It's for two reasons. So as not for the panel not to overheat and also it gives some shade to the camper itself. Now it's about 1.30 p.m. and I've just checked the battery and it's at 40 volts. So it's still a while until it reaches the top of 42 volts. Now it's obvious that charging with just a 100 watt panel will take a large part of the day so it's not you cannot really be completely autonomous nevertheless it does extend your range i wouldn't say by double but by one and a half times maybe and now i know this because uh, i also did the same test on the same road going up and down 20 times but without the solar panel and the battery died at uh, about 720 meter elevation gain and as you saw with the panel I did uh, 900 meters and I could have gone more so the panel is very useful still at the end of the day you do have to charge it with a regular charger which I have here now oh, there's a reason right now in this video why I didn't use two panels the first one is that this thing died on me you know that's what you get for buying cheap stuff it can either last your lifetime or one day so it lasted me one year so that's not so bad another reason is that it just doesn't fit in here very well you know it always extends too much so like for example here so it's always affected by the wind anyways i think given the area of the trailer a 150 watt panel would fit here perfectly uh, with 200 watts of panel it takes three hours to charge the battery now this thing takes three and a half hours so in that sense, you could be autonomous on sunny weather. These are called the Portuguese trade winds, and they're blowing from the northwest. They're blowing a little bit from the ocean. Over there is the ocean. You can hardly see it. It's only a mile away. And this, air, it, this air is very unpolluted, but now with this quarantine, it's even less unpolluted. You can really feel it. It's very fresh. And uh, it's hard to imagine that once the quarantine is over, we have to go back to the combustion engine, burning of fuel. You live, we lived for the past 200 years in the burning age. Cars, trucks, airplanes, trains, ships, combining fuel with oxygen and burning. 